Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing vectors. Specifically, we're going to discuss the standard unit vectors, linear combinations of vectors, the trigonomic form of a vector, and finding the direction angle of vectors. A standard unit vector is a vector that has a magnitude of 1 and coincides with the positive x-axis or the positive y-axis. So we have two of these vectors, one that longs, um, runs along the horizontal, and that one we call I, and the other one that runs vertically, which we call J. Vector I, standard unit vector I, is the one that runs from 0, 0 to 1, 0, and J is the vector 0, 1. We can write all vectors in terms of these standard unit vectors. Let's take a specific example. Suppose that we had vector P that, run, that has an endpoint at 3, negative 4. We can rewrite that as 3i minus 4j. Let's see how this works. Let's replace i with its vector form 1, 0, and j with its vector form 0, 1. Then we have scalar multiplications of 3 and 4. So that gives us the vector 3, 0, and we're going to subtract the vector 0, 4. So we end up with a vector 3, negative 4, which is what we started with. So 3i minus 4j is just called um, the linear combination of the vector. Vectors i and j are unit vectors because their length is 1. And their endpoints, therefore, must be on the unit circle. Actually, the endpoint of any unit vector must be on the unit circle because they all have a length of 1 or a magnitude of 1 which means that we can represent the vectors using cosine and sine. So the unit vector xy can be given as the vector cosine sine or as cosine theta i plus sine theta j in linear combination form. Remember this is just for the unit vectors because their magnitude is 1. The length of um, the vector is 1. But we can represent all vectors in this trigonomic form. Remember that when you're looking at a point x, y on the coordinate plane, and it doesn't have to have a length of 1, you know that the opposite, sorry, the adjacent over the hypotenuse is going to give you your cosine. And then all we do is isolate x. So x is the same as saying r cosine theta. Looking at our sine, it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we have y over r and isolating y we get r sine theta. So whenever you have a vector that's given as the coordinates x, y, you can rewrite it as r cosine theta comma r sine theta, or you can write it in linear combination form as r cosine theta i plus r sine theta j. Since we are working with vectors here, r is the vector in component form. In other words, that it has a starting point at 0 and x, y is its endpoint. The length of r is also called the magnitude of the vector r. Let's find a direction angle now. So whenever we're looking for a direction angle, we're looking for the angle that starts at the x-axis and goes in the counterclockwise direction until it meets with a vector. So here we have vector that ends at 3, 4. The first thing that we're going to do is find the magnitude of the vector r. So plugging into our Pythagorean theorem, we ended up with r has a magnitude of 5. Now what we want to do is look for our angle. So we're going to do sine, cosine, and tangent. Cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's our x value over our length, so 3 fifths. The sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that's our y value over the um, magnitude of the vector. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we ended up with 4 thirds. And you could have found that one also by doing sine divided by cosine. Let's do the arctan to figure out what our angle is. So on our calculators, we get about 53.13 degrees for our angle measure. Now, we could have um, used sine or cosine also to find the angle. But you have to kind of be careful which one you choose if you're not in quadrant 1, because you'll need to make an adjustment. Let's look at another example. Suppose we had the vector in linear combination form of 2i minus 3j. That means that its endpoint is at 2, negative 3, and its starting point is at 0, 0. 
we want to find the angle that starts at the x-axis and goes around in the counterclockwise direction until it meets the vector. So again, we're going to find the length of our vector. So using our Pythagorean theorem, we ended up with the square root of 13. Now we're going to use sine, cosine, and tangent. So our cosine gives us the x value over the hypotenuse, or the r value. And then I did the inverse cosine, which gave me 56.31. Now, <clears throat> that's an angle in quadrant 1, and we're looking for an angle that's in quadrant 4. So we need to make an adjustment for this. Remember that when you're looking, um, working with the inverse functions of cosine, a sine, or tangent, you're only going to get answers in two quadrants. For the cosine, you're going to get answers between 0 and 180. So for all the other angle measures, you need to make an adjustment. Let's look at the sine. The sine gives us negative 3 over the square root of 13. And if we did the arc sine of that, we get negative 56.31 degrees. Now remember that with the um, inverse sine function, you're only going to get answers between negative 90 and positive 90. So we have to make an adjustment on this one as well. Although this answer is in quadrant 4, it's a negative angle, and we want to get the positive angle. Now the tan is going to be negative 3 over 2, so we're getting out that negative angle again because the tan, the arc tan, is only going to be giving you answers between negative 90 and positive 90. So using the arc sine and arc tan, you're going to typically get the same answer, but with the arc cosine, you're going to get answers between 0 and 180. So you might be more particular about which um, one of these that you choose to find the arc sine or arc tan or arc cosine depending on what kind of angle you want. All right, so let's make our adjustment. If we choose to use the tangent of sine, we need to add our angle to 360. Well, we're adding a negative, so it's the same as really subtracting it. So our angle is really 303.7, somewhere around there. Now, with the arc cosine, it was positive number, so we're going to subtract from 360. So just um, remember that you may need to make those adjustments. Um, if it's in your angles in quadrant 2, I would use the cosine. If your angles in quadrant 3, you can use any of them. Just remember that you're going to have to make an adjustment on those. All right, thank you for tuning in. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions.